Hey guys, it's Linus again. I posted a couple of Shakespeare videos in the last couple weeks and I got some really positive responses, but I got one response from user Cavalier on Reddit and he brought up some really good points. So I want to take a step back for a moment and prepare you for some of the things we're heading to with all this discussion about meter. Meter itself is basically like a time signature. It's the rhythm of the line. And there are some fun things that happen with the rhythm that can help you understand what the character is saying. However, when I say things like power words at the end of a sentence, and when I talk about important words falling on certain beats, what I'm trying to do is instill an appreciation for how the language is structured, not give you line readings or ways that you should say the lines. The meter actually emerges out of a natural reading of the line. I also understand that one of the examples that I use from Hamlet, to be or not to be, that is the question, has a couple of strange things that happen with meter that make it not the most easy introduction to the concept. So a better example might be the opening line in Romeo and Juliet. Two households both alike in dignity. Two households both alike in dignity. Now I'm exaggerating it for you to hear it. There are five feet or beats there, and each foot is an I am. Da 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 da. So that's a very regular example, and maybe in that you can hear more clearly what's going on with meter. There are certain things that I, as an actor, had to learn. I had to learn not to die down at the end of a sentence because that was my tendency as a New York American kid hipster, basically, is that I wanted to go like this at the end of a sentence. So one of the things from the outside in that I had to learn was to lift at the end of a sentence. Now Cavalier argues that this should happen already when you're actively pursuing an objective, but it was just a speech pattern in my life that even when I was pursuing an objective and an action clearly through the text, I was still dying down. It was a bad habit. So from my perspective, and he and I might disagree on this, there are some tools from the outside in that can be helpful when you're approaching complex text. Now he makes a very good point, and I definitely don't want to glide over this. The point when you're using the text is to make it alive by pursuing action with the text. So these characters are using complex language, and they're using that language because they're trying to express the inexpressible, they're trying to convey something very important, and they're trying to change the world and change the people around them with what they're saying. Now, the images that they're using are so complex that the form and structure and the terminology they use becomes equally complex. I want to make it clear that even though I'm telling you some of these basic building blocks when it comes to rhythm and meter and things to keep in mind, at the end of the day the important thing is that these characters are using these images in order to change the world, in order to change the person they're speaking to, in order to change the gods, in order to change what's around them. They're trying to use these images to get something across. So I might talk about certain rhythmic things and certain ways you can work with emphasis and Yes, from some perspective that might seem like working from the outside in, but it's just a tool. At the end of the day, as actors, when we're working naturalistically, when we're trying to portray human experience on stage, and not all acting is about that, we'll get to that later, we have to remember that the words are just vehicles for our actions. 